All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. My name is Kyle. As always, we're here with Matt, my co-host. And tonight, our special guest is Coach Cody Gardner, who is the DC and linebackers coach at Corner Canyon in Utah, coming in to talk to us a little bit about some linebackers, some run fits, and some stuff tonight. They were the 2023 6A state champs. He's originally from Illinois and made his way out to Utah to uh, to live the good life, I guess. So, Coach, welcome to the show. We're excited to have you on. No, oh, man, it's my pleasure. I'm looking, really looking forward to talking some ball. And yeah, we, we went running away from humidity, essentially, is what the uh, <laughs> back when we started to make a choice on where we wanted to go. Uh, the, the big factor on the list was like, where, where is there not humidity? Um, and so that was the deciding factor to Utah. Um, well, coach, don't come down to where me and Matt live if you don't like humidity because it, it would not be fun for you. Oh, that's not my vote. I love humidity. <laughs> Perfect. And, uh, I, I, I knew we were moving. I didn't know where we were moving, right? <laughs> like it was, Hey, we got uh, North Carolina. We got Florida. We've got this one. We've got this one. I've got this Utah one. And she's like, we're in Utah. And then, so that was kind of the, the conversation. And then like six weeks later, I was like, Hey, we're moving to park city. She's like, park where <laughs> like, park city, Utah. And so kind of how it happened, happened real late. Like we literally two week notice, from yeah. wow. quit my job, gonna show up. We got the we got to Utah on Sunday at <coughs> three o'clock before Monday's first day of practice. Wow. Sight Just... unseen, furthest west I'd been in my life. <laughs> Pull into paradise into Park City, right? And uh lived in a mother in law suite above the garage of our O line coach. Wow. Me, my wife, my hundred and seventy pound Great Dane, and our seven pound Chihuahua. <clears throat> That's the life there. Oh yeah. I literally like, do I bring my golf clubs or do I bring my dog? Brought my dog. You know, like it was those <laughs> were the choices. A 70 inch TV or the other dog. You know, so it was it was pretty crazy. We kind of just we had a little bit of a safety net. We kinda had we still had our place in Missouri and uh we could, you know, like kept the bed and the TV and that stuff there. And like, if this is a disaster, we'll be back before the first snow hits. Um, at least hit in Missouri. It hit in uh it hit down in Park City on September 14th, our first snow. <laughs> Dude, I freaked out. No, thank I you. I freaked out. I came home and I was like, I effed up. <laughs> I was like, I knew it snowed, right? But it never occurred to me that it would snow the second week of September. And we got like three inches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. I, I had a similar rough. story being from Florida. I, I moved in Nebraska to work for Huddle for three years. Okay. And the last uh winter i'm there it's it's not winter it's may 1st my friends are at home talking about surfing i'm texting with them in florida it starts snowing and i was like nope i'm done i'm done with nebraska i'm going home like i can't do this anymore so that was a that was my break moment after three winters there i was like i'm i'm out guys this is yeah. it, yeah. it broke me july and august <laughs> are the only two months where i haven't seen snow now oh my god jeez june snow Coach, All I've right. seen snow one time in my life, and <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'll stay in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny, man. Too funny. Love it. All right. Well, let's get into it tonight. So I know uh, kind of the first topic we talked about um, way back when, to give it a little bit of background, I saw you post on some linebacker progression stuff, and I was really interested. So I just DM'd you, and like an awesome coach on Twitter, and which is why I love this community. You gave me a thorough uh, breakdown of it. You sent me videos and everything. It was fantastic. So I was like, hey, one of the first things I want to talk about when you come on is that linebacker progression because I found yeah. it fascinating. So can you talk a little bit about that, Coach? Yeah. So uh, my first year as a DC, I had kind of had some, some – I was coaching down safeties at this school. The DC uh, stepped away. He was the inside coach. And I kind of had a decision. Do I stay with where I'm comfortable with the new workload as a DC or do I take over – probably our least talented group own that and own the DC put somebody who maybe isn't um, we put up putting my O-line coach with the nickels, right. With like a nickel Sam guy. So like the workload was like the least for him. Cause like being an O-line coach is like being a coordinator. Like it's yeah. not a position coach. Right. And like the kid we had was an absolute dude. He just got a cotton bowl win with Missouri. Right. So like all he had to do was make sure the dude didn't get hurt coming and going from practice, <laughs> get on the bus. Right. Um, so I took the insides, but like, you know, like most people and whether it's good or bad, a lot of times when we coach stuff or how we coach is what we know or what we've been exposed to, right? You don't yep. know what you don't know. You only know what you see. And so 
I had coached uh, D line, I'd coached outside backers, and you know down safety stuff. But I had never really coached inside. I had some good guys I'd worked with that were excellent inside backer coaches, and so I always talked to them, picked their brain, and that kind of stuff. And I kind of knew how they like to go about it. But this is 10, 11 years ago, and to me, reading guards didn't make sense anymore because we were seeing so much RPO, right? And even in practice, right? Like I'm, I, I don't really care about winning a period, but I'm competitive. Yeah. Right. And I also know like, well, if they're doing this, the other people are going to do this. And like, so I got lucky in that, like I had to defend an RPO air raid team 10 years ago. So when I started thinking about how I was going to piece together my defense, I kind of geared towards RPOs and air raid and match coverages and stuff, which drug me into a really good direction. Yeah. So one of my, whatever the case would be, I, 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 um, I coach track. I'm a baseball guy, right? I've coached wrestling. I'm a basketball guy. I never did track or wrestling, but I was a pretty good track and wrestling coach, really good track coach. Um, because I have the ability to like go study and like void myself of any kind of like preconceived notion. So like if I go to study something, I don't carry any of my bullshit in to study it, right? And so, which is good. So I get it. I don't know if I cuss or not. I, I tend to cuss. You're um, good. <laughs> okay, good. Because they're coming. And so <laughs> I, I kind of tend to study. And I want to be a blank slate. I don't want to, because like I, I come from an IT background, right? And like a problem solving background. And I trained guys for years in troubleshooting. And the problem is, is you guys get, you get into like loops. Or if yeah. we come to a fork in the road, and as hard as you want to go right, you go left every time, right? Somebody that comes in isn't as, as knowledgeable as you, doesn't understand as well as you. They walk in and they're like, they see it flat and like, oh, it's, let's go right. And they find the answer. So like when I go to study, I try to make sure I don't get caught in those loops, right? That, you know, like any kind of like tendency or preconceived yeah. notion. Um, and so I started studying everybody. And trying to figure out what made sense for my guys and how I wanted to play defense and how I wanted to fit the ball. And I took a little from here, a little from there, a little here from a little there. And um, what we came into was that we were going to read, we we're going to cross read everything. Right. And we're, and mind you, we're a four, three, four, two, five team at this time. So we're going to cross read everything, even like my safety, like my weak side safety. He was going to cross read. He wasn't going to read in man line scrimmage. Just because I felt like the linemen are, are the biggest liars on the field anymore. They're going to give you pulls. They're going to give you hi-hat sets. They're going to do all these things to give you false information, right? And so I wanted to get away from that. I felt like the ball lies less, right? Like, like Rasheed Wallace, ball, ball don't lie, right? Like, <laughs> ball don't lie. If the, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I was like, we've got to figure out a way maybe to track the ball and then verify what's going on with the linemen. Right. They'll lie. Lyman will lie to you in the first couple steps. It's hard for them to lie throughout the course of the whole play. Right. So if you got a set and then they re-engage on draw. Okay. They lied to you just long enough to sell you, the, sell you. Yeah. And then they had to actually do what they're going to do. Right. So we start a cross read from gun. All right. So gun offset. We're going to cross read. It also helps us up with like zone read. So the guy pulls it, runs. Well, the running, the, the linebacker that's across from the quarterback. Yeah. That's the guy he's reading the whole time. That's his fit, yeah. right? And we're going to be open, closed window fits, right? And so, which is also important why I had to feel like I had to read this way was because we're four down, but we were playing two GOG, right? Or like two gap, open gap, two gap, one gap. Yeah. Every, every down. A lot of people do it as a call. Mm-hmm. Our tag was to take it off to play single gaps, Right. And so my guys had needed to be able to understand the surface, not just a gap. Right. So they're going to press their pre-snap gap, but that surface is a dynamic, is dynamic. Right. Like it's not post-snap picture to a D line is there's a double team on the three, they're reading the five or the, you know, they double down the three, they pull the garden, the GT back. Right. Like all that thing changes. So like, it's great that I think V gaps, my pre-snap gap or a gaps, my pre-snap gap. But once it starts going, it's more than likely going to change, right? And so I wanted to be able to have my guys understand, like, actually the whole surface, A gap, B gap, C gap, right? And so that's where we start is is what we do is we read the guy that's across from us, right? So we cross read, okay? And the first thing we want to do um, is we're just going to, we're going to read the first step of the guy we're reading. Okay, that's all we're looking for is the first step. 
All right. And the first step takes us to the surface we need to see. Right. So if the guy steps at me, I look at the surface in front of me. And by surface, I mean guard, tackle, tight end, sniffer, whatever the hell's there. Right. And so that's what I'm going to look for. Right. And so then I'm going to press that gap that I have, knowing that more than likely the window is going to change. Right. Because if it's a down block, we're going to squeeze and play the B from the backside. In 2GOG, if you get a base block and you have an open gap to your inside, you're crossing face. Cross, yeah. So I'm still going to get to the C gap. Yeah. Right. And so I had to be able to get these guys to understand that it wasn't just a gap. It wasn't just guard down, fill, insert. Not that we don't do that. Yeah. Right. And we'd have to take out some insurance just in case the if we don't cross this. Right. So let's say I'm on the weak side. I got a one and five in front of me and I'm at a 30. I'm pressing the B gap. If the, the DN can't cross the O lineman's face, well, then that gap. is my gap. Right. But if we can cross face, then I'll get a gap exchange and I'll fill. I'll rub right off of my DN, right? And now that guard see me come at it, and now we switch. So the guard, if he's trying to get to second level, if he's doubling the one to get to second level, when he breaks to come off and I run to the C gap and that, that five tech slips all the way down, yeah. now we're gapped out again, right? And so that's where this reads, these reads came from. Um, I've heard one guy explain it like, if you read offset like we do, cross read, it's like the offset backs the full back in the eye. Kind of takes you to it, right? And that's great, except it doesn't account for QB to run. So, <laughs> right? But the, the, but if we have a sedentary quarterback, that's kind of what we do. If we yeah. have a guy that doesn't run, we'll just both read the back. But that realistically, I know it sounds crazy, but that's really what we're trying to do is just get to a verification, right? So what I mean by verification is that we think that there are only so many things a play can be, right? There's gap, there's runs, C gap to C gap. There are runs outside of the C-gap. There are passes that come from inside the C-gaps, and there are passes that come from outside the C-gaps, right? There's only, that's only four things an offense can really do. They can run inside the tackles, run outside the tackles. They can pass from the pocket. They can pass from outside the pocket. Yeah. Okay? And so our fits are based upon what they do. Okay? And so we feel like on a, on, in a, as a linebacker, I can get flow at me, right? I can get flow away. Right. Those are both interior run fits for the most part. <clears throat> we get fast flow, which would be an outside the run fit. Right. And then the last one being mixed. Right. Is that mixed like split being, zone? M- yes. Mis- okay. Just some sort of mix. Right. Where the running back is showing to the left, but we've got a sniffer, a guard, somebody coming back to the right. Gotcha. It's mixed. So he's lying to me. He's lying to me there. And the, so whenever he steps, to his left, I look at that surface, I see the sniffer, or I see the guard leave, I now know that that's not flow at me, that's flow away. Yeah. Right? And so that's the whole idea for us is he steps at me, that's flow at, I see a puller, I now realize it's flow away, and I act accordingly. Right? And so the cool thing is, is that when I went to an odd front, we actually went to a 3-5 for a while, nothing changed for my reads for my back. When we went from a 3.5 to a 3.4, nothing changed. We're still open, closed window. We're still cross-reading to surface. It's allowed us to be crazy multiple. I can walk a D lineman down, get into a third front, and we felt like a 4.3 doesn't change my backer's reads at all. He knows his pre-snap. He knows how to read surface. So so, talk a little bit about that. Can we slide right back to that split zone? Talk about how you meant, right? You're, You're talking about, to you, that's read away. And so talk about flow exactly away. where the eyes are going, or sorry, flow away. Talk yeah, about yeah. where your eyes are going there. Right. So let's say it's like um, they're in 11, right? Yep. The Y off sniffer or whatever. I don't really call it 20, but whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so in the back is, let's say the back is on the same side, right? They've, they've, they're they've on the same side as the sniffer. So I let's say, and like for us, we call it to the strength. So I'm the mic. I'm to the twin side. Hmm. Running back's away from me. That's my read. Right? Yeah. He steps at me. Right. I see fast flow or flow, excuse me, flow at me. Yeah. Right. So I press my gap and I play my, my surface. Okay. The will, the guy on the opposite side was playing the quarterback. Right. He sees the quarterback steps at him. He sees the sniffer go across. He now knows that he is, that is flow away. The ball is going away from him. It's flow away. Check my A. Right. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you flip the running back on the quarterback, now the sniffer and the running back are opposite. Yeah. Now the will gets flow at him, right? So let's think he's thinking, I got to plug the B. 
He sees the sniffer. He now knows I flow away. Check my A. Gotcha. Right. Because it, I, I got fast flow step. I got flow at me steps. So I take my eyes from there to the surface. And the best way I explain it to people is like, um, like the old miner hats, they have the, the light, wherever the light <laughs> shines, I need to see it all. Yeah. Right. So I don't, I'm not looking like tight window. There's the guard. So I see step surface. I see the sniffer go. I now know I'm flow away, split on split zone. Right. Cause in theory, the backside guard or the, whatever the backside guard the, in the center are going to double my nose in the three front. Right. So he's going to play into the double. That's going to yep. open up the A gap to me. They're going to block back on my five. He crosses face in the B. So now the nose is front side A. I'm backside A. Ends backside B. Overhangs the C. Yep. Right. So that, <clears throat> and so that's so what would happen would be is if let's say I didn't see that split zone and I go down and press my gap. Now I bury B. We cross face. We get two guys in the gap. Or. I see him cross face. And what do I do? Cause I always do. I flow over the top and you're now outside. Yeah. And now I got two guys in the C gap. Yep. Right. And so it's really crucial that we see those flow aways. Um, and then even like if I get fast flow, but I get right a puller. So let's say like power read, right? I'm the will on power read. They pull the backside guard to trap block for the QB. Right. And so I see fast flow. Right, because of the power read, the blocking, whatever the case may be. But then I see that I get puts me in the A gap, which allows me to see the guard pull. Yeah. So I now know I can fit over the top and play the QB. Right. So that's the whole thing, because because there's no such thing as fast flow away. Yeah. Right. There's only flow away. So as soon as he sees that fast flow, whether it's a jet motion or the running back coming across, he knows that he's fitting flow away. Right. And then when it comes to your your I don't, we don't chase a single puller, like trap. We don't chase it, right? We only chase if there's two. Okay. Um, I'm not here to tell you guys whether that's right or wrong. That's just what we do. But um, we still need to see it for the fit. But we will go over the top, like I said, if the quarterback's not a runner or something. Um, but we do chase on two pullers. So that we get GT, GH, GY. Yeah. We see the second puller, we lever, right? So that would be the last flow that we work on is what we call lever fits, which is when we get two polars from a surface. And then, but like if I'm the, let's say like it's, we'll go back to um, twins left, the running backs right, sniffers right, and we get G, GH counter, right? If I'm the mic, I'm on the two receiver side, I'm away from the running back. I don't need to know that it's GH. Because I get flow at me. Yeah. My guard doesn't leave. I'm fitting accordingly. <laughs> I should get down, squeeze, overlap, right? Because they're leaving the end. Yeah. But like, I don't need to, I don't need to verify a puller, right? And do anything different because I got flow at me that my guard didn't leave. I'm going to fit it as flow at. Yeah. The backside guy is the guy that now the quarterback opens the mesh. He steps to my surface. At my surface, I see the guard and the sniffer leave. Now I know I'm on a lever fit over the top. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. It's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's not too far off. I mean, I always taught reading the guards and all this stuff. It's actually not too far off. Cause we are a big gap exchange team and, and things like that. You just have like the little nuances that are different, which is what was, I was so curious about because like you said, we're, we're pretty good at gap schemes, but there were a few things that we got caught on because we read guards and stuff like that. So there were some boot style stuff and things like that, that we struggle with and a little bit with split zone at times um, mm -hmm. when they were able to rock it back. Well, so. Yep. And, and, and it also comes into like, all right, so now we've got QB run game, right. Or RPO game. Yeah. Well, if I'm cross reading, I'm on the QB, right. I get mesh that instantly makes me feel like it's flow away. Yeah. So now I'm not flying down to the B gap. I'm not hammering it. If I'm the nickel to the offset to the reading the quarterback and I'm in space, that's, I'm not triggering on any run Yeah, on a mesh. So I can hang out in the RPO window. I can afford to play slow. I can understand that. Yeah, that the QB run is mine, but he's got to get outside the CD gap yeah. for it to be mine. So in a lot of ways, unless the team's running like, like flop RPO where they're, you know, reading and throwing the opposite. Yeah. It, it puts us in a really good position. Um, and then like a pistol face, you freeze. So face, kind of triggers their fast, their slow, like their flow, flow away response, right? If you get the, if you get the backside, you get his numbers, it triggers your run at flow, but the reads are still, you know, cross, right? It's still the, still the mixed flow we're looking for to, to verify. 
Yeah, and that weird. was that was going to be my exact next question. What's how, how does the pistol change your cross reads? So so to piggyback on top of that one, coach, um, instead of having the Y just off, what if you're looking at a straight uh, split look at a gun? We have quarterback and a back on each side at the same level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like like just like ten two just, by yeah. two. Yeah, 10, uh, two by no, two. twenty personnel, twenty personnel, two back, oh, two back, split. gun, gun split back, Perfect. gun split. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna read the running backs because that's the running back away from me. Okay, so you're like, well, coach, what about one hundred percent? One hundred percent, we're with you, right? So this is this is a little bit of the genius of it, right? So let's say they want to go um, inside zone triple out the back door. Yeah. Right. So if I'm the mic and I get my running back and it's flow at me, I fit flow at. I don't have a puller. Nothing pulls me out of it. My running back that I'm reading steps at me. Shoulders downhill. They're not to the sideline. That's me on the in, on. That's a flow at fit. Hell or high water, right? Now let's say I'm the will. I'm the opposite side. What's that running back going to do in order to run option out the backside? It's going to get like wide. He's coming He's gonna around. He's going to get wide, but yeah. what is his shoulder? What's his posture going to do? In order to get over there, is he going to shuffle or is he going to open up? Yeah, he's going to open too. He's going to open up. He's going to square yeah. to the sideline. Right. Fast flow. So if I'm reading him, it's fast flow to my side. <clears throat> right? And our rule on fast flow is first open window outside. So whether they leave the D lineman or they hook the D lineman, I'm running off the gap right away. When, that, when I see that guy go, right, my overhang is watching that running back as well. When he turns his shoulders, he's in fast bow flip. He's on the pitch. So that guy turning his shoulders to get into pitch relation triggers the backside to fit just like speed option because yeah. that's exactly what it looks like to them. Right? So the front side yep. sees zone. The backside sees speedo. If you want to run GT, right, we don't check. We don't check flow on fast flow. It is an automatic trigger. If you go GT and you run speed option out of the back, my outside line back, my my backer will run the arc and play the QB. The outside backer will play the pitch, right? We will chase the heel line from the backside, right? And we're going to fit it up from the front side because what am I going to see? Flow at still. So I'm going to fit. They give me down. We spill, spill. Overhang is the last guy. So yeah, that's what. No, go ahead. You coach. Oh, yeah. Keep no, so yeah. The, yeah. So that's how we do it. So, um, yeah, the it's definitely one what? of those things like oh, but they, they they I've yet to have a play where like the demeanor of that other guy confuses us. Even if they had twenty and they ran like power read or jet, mm-hmm. right? If I'm the front side guy, that's 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 a hundred percent fast flow. Fast flow, yeah. Right, so I'm yeah. gone. And then on the back guy, oh, that's fast flow. That's flow away to me. So I'm flow away. Check my A. So even if the quarterback pulls it and gets downhill, you got a Q player. And we always were out of our 20 personnel. We ran two main plays. We're either going to run stretch and get that lead blocker out of the backfield, right? So we're, you're going to see fast flow to it. Yep. Our comeback to that was showing counter <clears throat> where we were bringing our, if we were running it to the left, we'd bring that play side back across at the backside defensive end, GT to the other side yeah. and bring that other back off counter look. But we would tell them to come flat and then insert for the end. Um, mm-hmm. what, what would your line, how would your linebackers be responsible for reacting that when he's getting a fast flow away and we're coming with the counter well, GT so back? The, yeah. So you're, so if they're running it to the right, the right running back, he's chipping the backside, right? Correct. He's running the opposite. Yeah. He's coming yeah, so, across the quarterback and we're giving right, him a fake. His demeanor, his demeanor's not turned. His demeanor's what? Downhill. Right, because he's not going to go wide. He's going to get down and out of the way for yeah. the mesh for GT. So if I'm the backside guy, I get flow at, counter pull, lever, I'm gone. Okay. If the quarterback were to, if like they bluffed it, where the front side guy seals, chips, arcs it, like they, the Niners just do this with Kaepernick yeah. all the time. They would mm-hmm. take the front side guy, they would arc it, right? They would outside shoulder, they would log his ass. Kaepernick would pull it, and they'd get out the gate. Yeah. Right? Yep. I still have my overhand. So if he if, if he gets downhill, my my will backer sees downhill by the running back. He sees counter. He lever fits. My outside backer is watching the running back. He gets downhill. That's flow at. He is squeezing. He sees the gar- the tackles leave. He's got a condensed set. So there's our cue play. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, so that's, it's it's like saying it's hard to fool us because eventually you got to go where you got to go. Linemen actually have a little bit more time. The backs don't. The backs have to declare almost immediately. <laughs> And so for us, it gives us – because it's, it's, it's no different than option football on offense. What's the worst thing an, op- an option team can have is when they slow play you. Yeah. You're like, I don't give a mm-hmm. shit what you do. Just do it <laughs> so I can make you wrong. Yeah. Right? Same thing for us. Like, if I have to wait on – the and let's get real, too. Like, reading scout team line, impossible. Right? <laughs> a lot of the, the O-lines you see throughout the weeks aren't great. Right? So, like – just the reliability of reading line is just not what it is. And like I said, they have a little bit, especially in gun, they have time to dick around a little bit. Right. Yeah. Whereas the backs don't because they're at seven, because they're stepping sideways, they have to get fucked downhill and they don't have time to dick around with the reads. And so when you guys declare now, would you have to, and that's also why, like I just want to say earlier, like the weak side safety's cross reading, right. Cause he's going to be either the corner or that DB or inserting in the run on the weak side of a four, two, five. That's why they were going to cross read is because they need to see that action at them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the cue and for the pulls. This is, I mean, <laughs> coach, when you explained it to me the other day, you started, I forget. I was in the middle. I probably should admit this. I was in the middle of like the work day and I just DM'd you and I wasn't expecting this awesome barrage. And I like stopped working for a solid two hours because <laughs> I'm looking at what you did and some of the stuff you sent me. And now I'm doing exactly what we're talking about now. I'm like drawing up plays. I'm like, all right, this would be the key and here's split flow. And so yeah. I have my notebook. It's, it's far enough away that I don't want to get up and get it, but it's funny. Cause I just started scribbling a bunch of stuff yep. and uh, it was hysterical. And I was like, I can't believe it. I've just unlocked something new that I would yeah. definitely use in teaching now. And yeah. I've, I've talked to Matt about this. I'm like, look, I've, I've always been a guard raid guy. Like that leads us to the promised land. And then later on in my career, we got caught on a few things. And then you talked about that. And I was like, I'm a dipshit. Here we go. Like, well, and I, I will read guards. We'll read guards. Yeah. But we start with the complex part. Correct. I meant the, like the pure, like, yeah. right. Guards yeah. gone. I'm gone. Let's go. Well, that's you know, the thing. So. We go play a wing T team. Guess what we do? Hey guys. Yeah. Just get your eyes on the guards. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. Cause it's, it's, it's less, it's not, you know, my eyes aren't tracking. I'm not, it's guard goes. I get right. And like we talk about I'm like, Hey boys, this is right. And the same thing, like, Hey, this week we don't have to cross read. We're just going to read the running. Down. But if we start with the most complex, it's a yeah. very easy game plan wise. Like, Hey, this week, don't worry about it. Or it's like, we're playing, like, you know, like we'll do a triangle read. Like this year we played a team that was kind of a hybrid wing team and stuff, wing T team. And I, I got my one linebacker who's a little bit more experienced to try and go read both guards in the fullback. Right. Yeah. And the other kid was like, that ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Dude. Try on your flipping guard. You're fine. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, you know, that's part of that's the art of coaching, but yeah, I like, I like the way we read just because like I, I, I did a clinic talk last year and I talked about my fits and I had guys who I was going to play the next year in there. Right. And they're like, well, what are your fits to this? I drew it up. Yeah. I told them every rule we had, face, cross face. Blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, what front do you want? What play do you want? Let yeah. him call the front, call the play. I'm like, now we're just going to apply our rules. Yeah. He steps here, he looks here. Like, yeah. I'm like, what does he do? He pulled. Okay. Flow away, check his head. He can double team, like double team. Fit the double. He got what? Base? Okay. He's going to cross face. He's going to fit here, 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 here. And the guy goes, well, what play bothers you? <laughs> it wouldn't, right? Like, I'm not saying that we don't give up yards. We got gun yeah. this year a couple times, right? But like, I, I have a hard problem going into it, right? Without something that I feel like doesn't needs the least amount of adjustment. And if we're adjusting, we're adjusting simpler, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're taking more off your plate. It's not like, hey, this week we've got to be really good about some shit we haven't practiced. And so, um, you know, like I told, I tell everybody, like, like what what bothers you? What bothers you more? Twenty one personnel, uh, twelve personnel, like good personnel. Yeah. Talent That's scares the saying. shit out of me. Yeah, 12, <laughs> 12 when you got two D1 tight ends gets real scary, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like we played we played Gorman this year, and um, their yeah. tight end was a grown-ass man. Um, <laughs> like our, our corner hit him, and he's like, I went tingly. We still give him a hard time <laughs> for saying it. But I was like, yeah, dude, you hit a dude like that, you do go tingly. Uh, and then they had like two running backs that are both FBS guys. Yeah electric call by me third and three i gamble i just the perfect play call yeah, yeah he went 65 yards it didn't, it oh, didn't yeah, coach didn't yeah happen, right he, he made my safety miss at the line of scrimmage i was like well i could hang my hat on that that was the right call 
However, yeah. I probably could get my safety a baseball bat and he probably still couldn't have got him down. <laughs> so it just is what it is sometimes, man. But no, I, the way we read, um, I know that there's other guys that do it, right? Um, I never, like, I, and I didn't know anybody else was doing it. This is probably the craziest part is like, I was just dumb enough and young enough in my career where I was like, I'm doing it. Yeah. That's, that's a good sweet spot. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mount yeah, stupid. Just, I didn't know how yeah. dumb I was. And so, you know, like all these guys that like the guy that left was uh, uh, the DC that left before I became the DC, uh, was still in the building. We have a great relationship. We talked how he taught it for years and I was like, ah, eh, fuck it. I'm not doing it that way. <laughs> right. Just the balls to do that. Um, it's- Right. But then it worked. Yeah. And that's thing. It worked. It helped my average guys get better. Um, you know, maybe if I had really instinctual guys, maybe it wouldn't be great for them. Maybe like if I had some guy or whatever, because I'm that way with coverage. Like I like two reading palms when guys are a little bit more cerebral and have a little bit thicker ankles Yeah, because the processing speed makes up for their limited athleticism. If we're super athletic, I want to be like country four or country three. I want them getting depth with their eyes on the ball in the air, or we're just going to man it up. Yeah. I don't need those dudes thinking. Yeah. I just need them playing, right? And so it's a little bit of that with those backers. Like I've had really, really good linebackers, and I just um like we it, it takes them a second, but once they get it, it's like a magic trick. And the craziest one's on JV night. The kid that's a little undersized or a little slow, and he just walks over to the ball every snap. Yeah. Yeah. We had a kid during the COVID year in Park City, five four, <laughs> one forty eight, led the JV in tackles. They'd snap it. He'd just walk right to the hole and wait for the ball. <laughs> and so, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, but I think what you just said goes a lot into it is, is you teach that progression from day one when they step foot on your campus. So by the time they are a junior or senior, you know, they're ready to go. And I know, uh, you know, I've been on a couple of your Zooms. You talk about your school. You guys are pretty darn talented. So it does take some of those kids three and four years to get a starting spot. So they've definitely – repped and repped and repped and really had to work their way up and, and very much earn it. You know, it's yeah. when you know, if you don't get real good at something, you're not going to play at a school, you're, you're going to learn it. So yeah. that's the other big piece to it. Right. Yeah, I, had a, I had a kid, I reached out that day and he's like, Hey coach, what I need to do in the off season, blah, blah, blah. Should I go with the trainer with this or that? And the first thing I said, I was like, when's the last time you did grid? Yeah. Like when, when's the last time that you did the thing that we do every day from the day one to the finals and we do it in pregame. Like maybe you should do that drill that like you can teach your mom how to do the steps. Your mom can do what I do during that drill. Your brother or somebody can do the drill, right? That side of it. Like that's what you need to do. Because for, for me is if you can't, whether you can make a tackle in space or you could actually make a tackle, um, that's, you know, we'll teach it to you, but like there's some limits, right? Yeah. <laughs> but there's no limit to your ability to like learn and master how to find where the ball's going to be. Yeah. Can you make the play when you have the opportunity? Just like my safety was in the right spot. Couldn't make the tackle. Right. It happens. You go around against guys that are better than you. You get beat sometimes, but it's like, if you can't do this, then I can't even trust you to put you on the field to give you an opportunity to make that or not make a play. Yeah. Right. And so, um, so we do it constantly, right? It's some, we hang our hat on it. Um, we and the nice thing too, is from a, from a positional coach spot, every kid does our grid. Right. And by grid guys, I mean like we literally, I'll put my, Number one, Mike, my number one, Will. Number two, Mike, number two, Will, right? And then they go behind. So it's a grid. It's like grit, graph paper. You guys want to know what kind of nerd I am? Graph paper. Love it. Nerd. Nerd, <laughs> right? So we, we, we grid up like it's graph paper. And I stand. And so if I stand in the middle of the Mike and the Will, I'm the QB. If I offset one side or the other, I'm a running. Because they both need to read both. Now, the way we call yeah. strength, the Mike tends to play the quarterback more. Okay. But he has to know both reads. Right. Yeah. And so then what I do is we start off with our stance. Okay. Um, and ev- this is the best part is everyone gets every rep. There's no line. Right. Cause I can sit there and I can see everybody yeah. and I can see it all. Right. So the first thing we do is get in our stance and I teach a pretty relatively unique stance. I think at times, um, it's wider than most. Okay. The hips are tall. Right. And the chest is super, super flat and hidden. Okay. Like I'll tell them, I point to the, 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 the five man sled all the time. I'm like, look, dude, do you see their numbers? I was like, yeah, I'm like, well, that's what they practice on. So let's yeah. not look like the dumb dummies, right? Like let's get, get our damn chest down. Okay. And then really posture wise, um, go look up, uh, Nadal's 
Rafael Nadal, Agassi, whoever you want, go look up how they look when they're returning serve. Wide stance, tall hips, chest forward, chest down, relaxed hands, right? And they're up, they're relaxed, but they're up on the balls of their feet and their feet aren't static. They're kind of popping, they're kind of moving, right? So that's the posture. That's what I want my linebackers to look like. Right. And so like the other day I retweeted something. It was like a four year old played tennis and like LBC. He could play for us because the dude was hitting <laughs> our flutter posture. Perfect. Yeah. Right. So the first thing we get in our stance and then I clap my hands and they flutter. Right. They just pop their feet. They keep their chest down. They keep their balance. good. And the flutter really is I want their cleats to come out of the ground, but not out of the grass. Does that make sense? Like I want it. Yeah. I'm going to move. <laughs> but I was telling like, you should be so relaxed while doing this. Like you could literally eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich, hands-free. Like, if you're going too hard, that thing's going to fall out of your mouth. It needs to be chill. <laughs> right? Chill. Yeah. Right? And so, that's the first thing we do. So, we line up, and like, stance. All right, stance, stance. And then when I clap, one, two, three, four, let them shake it out. We'll do it a couple more. That's all I want them to do. Just get that rhythm of popping their feet. Just, just quick. Right? It's not a false step. It's not a downhill read step. It's literally just keep them loose. Right? Because think about it, if, if, if that puts Nadal in the right position to return 127 mile an hour serve, it's probably going to get us to the B gap okay. <laughs> what, what a great, I, I never thought we'd be yeah. using tennis references here tonight, but what a great athletic uh, response that is because you're right. I mean, that's the perfect position to be as a tennis player returning the serve. Uh, yep. I never, I would have never thought of that. No. Coach. So I, sh- to- shout out to Coach Took at uh, at SEMO, Southeast Missouri. Flat ass stole it from him. That's oh, yeah. unreal. That's, that's awesome. Right? I that's would incredible. never, ever think to make that comparison. That's the that's, visual, right? It's that's awesome. the visual. I'm just ready, I'm keyed, and then bang, I can go. Right? <laughs> and so that's our first. So it's so first step, we grid up, we stance, we flutter. And a real macho, too. I intentionally call it flutter. Not popping or whatever. I want it to sound just weak as shit, right? Like I, I, I we're tough, man. When the LBC, we're tough. We, we flutter, right? Like just you know, just, you got to have fun with this shit, right? So yeah, I, I named it something super, super like light and cloudy. We're gonna flutter, right? And so then we go from clutter to we go to our our mirror step, okay? And that's all I do is I stand there and I just take a little step. And that's all I want them to do is take a little step, making sure that their chin stays inside their knee. Less is always more. So it's stance, flutter, step, flutter, step. And all we're really trying to do is load up the step foot for mixed flow. Yeah. We're not worried about the downhill part, right? We're just loading up that foot so I can drive out the other way for mixed flow. Okay. And so we go flutter, bang. And when I flutter, so that's what we do. So we do stance, flutter, mirror step, right? The next part of the, and this is how I teach stuff, piece, 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 whole, right? Like I, I, anybody can learn the stance. 99% of guys can flutter. 95% can mirror step, right? We are taking it to the lowest bit and teaching just it and coaching only it. So like if you take a bad flutter step and, and you have a bad stance, I won't coach you on the stance. When we do stance, I'll coach you on stance. Yeah. When we go to flutter, I only focus on their flutter, right? When we go mirror step, same shit. Bad stance, bad flutter, bad. Okay, hey, look, your stance isn't good. It might be like, or your your mirror step isn't good. It's probably coming from this other part, but slow it. I make the correction in that movement yeah. because that's their next rep, right? Yep. And so we go from stance, flutter, mirror. And now what we do is we do key step. So we call it mirror because we're mirror stepping. What are we mirror stepping? The key step. That's my read key. That's his step, right? Key. Now we call it key step to surface. So we've done stance, flutter, right? Mirror. Now we're going to mirror and we're going to put our eyes in it. For the first time, we're now going to put some eyes in it. And I just want to see them, whichever way they step, I want to see their eyes track. That's it. I don't want them looking at me. <laughs> I want them to take their eyes off me and see. And I tell them, don't, again, I don't need this guard, right? Like right yeah. now, I can only see Kyle. I, that doesn't work for us. I got to be, I got to be here. I got to be wide. I got to see Matt and Kyle. Yeah. I got to see the surface. Right. And so we go, so the progression, we now we're a mirror step. Now we're mirror to surface. Bang, right. Bang, 
And that's all they, I want to see him do. I just want to see him trap, right? I want to see him try to stay square. I want to see that chin stay in front inside the knee, right? I want to see them in an athletic position, but I want to see their eyes track the surface. That's what we're doing, right? And so that's progression, right? And so we get through those. And then now that we've done that, now that we've gotten into good stands, now that we have flutter, now that we have key step, now that we have you know, you know, mirror step, key step to surface, we are now going to work our flows, right? Mind you, no, no, no line. The worst guy and the best guy, same reps, same cues, right? I might have my studs turn around and do a rep facing the grid, right? Hey, everybody just watch, you know, watch, watch Owen. Hey, everybody yeah. watch Dave, right? But we go through that and then we go flows, right? And so now when I step, right, if I'm the quarterback or if I'm the running back and I step at your half, you should trigger flow at. The other side is flow away. Flow Check away. your A. So I should see the one half trigger downhill hard as shit and the other guy should be nice and even and staying elevated and checking the A again. Right? So we do flow at. Now when I step the other way, now they're flow away, now they're flow at. So even then, if I'm on the right side and we get like same side, yep. right? I step straight forward like on the same side, they see that's flow at, they see that that's flow away. Okay? And then we go from, so now we've done flow at, flow away, and this is also where we do fast flow. So if I kick my shoulder sideways, front side's fast flow, they're arcing, running the banana outside, backside guys are working flow away. Again, every kid, every rep. Yeah. No line. We're, we're just getting our eyes used to seeing input. Right? And so we go through those three are self-contained, right? Because those are what, essentially what? They're not mixed. Right? They're not a specialty. Yeah. Flow at, flow away, and fast flow are standard as shit. Right? What you see is what you're getting. Right? And then the next one we do is mixed flow. So now, same thing. I line up. I take my step. If I step at you, flow at you, I want to see you flow at, surface, and then bubble back into flow away. Right? The backside guy, if I stepped away from you, you think you're flow away. Flow away, check your A. If it's some sort of trap or GT, what's that A gap going to do? Is it going to be open or cloud? Because I got a nose guard or I got a one yeah. whatever. It's going to go down, down. Yeah. So my A clouds, I look to B, B gets clouded. I scrape over top for C, right? So D lineman plays the down block, spills the first polar, I wrap across the different, right? So we go just one section of mixed flow, right? And I'll do it from the quarterback side. I'll do it from the running back side. But what I'm looking for here now is I want to see them really load that first step, right? So they're here, they flutter, boom. I want to see them load that thing and then react. They adjust. Now right? are Either, you... Yeah, oh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Are you no. telling them it's split flow right before that? Because you're still only given a one step action, correct? Hundred percent. I tell them mixed. So I'm like, okay. all right, boys, here we go. Flow at fast flow, flow away. And we do that. And then I'm like, all right, here we go, mixed flow. And then when my steps, now you know when you get that your step at, you're getting a mixed flow read. Gotcha. Right, you're getting that mixed flow read. So you're like, okay, cool. And then they should trigger accordingly. Right. And then what I do too is I'll carry out the mixed flow a little bit. So I'll take that step and then I'll come back. And when I come back, you'll see the other side guys triggered down, right? Because it's flow away, flow away, essentially, until yeah. I commit, right? So if it's like same side, if it's a cross body thing, then you don't need to know because that's flow at you flash. If it's trap or GT and it's running to the left and I'm the backer on that side and you step at me and the pole comes from the same side, I don't give a shit if it's mixed flow. Yeah. It's flow at me. <laughs> I don't need to know anything more. It's when it's the cross, right? It's Correct. whenever you get step at you, pull away. I need you in flow away mode, or I need you to lever on two poles. So we do that, those first three flows together. Then we do mix flow. Then we go to piston, right? So now I'm the quarterback and I turn, when I turn, I should get a trigger on this side. I should get flow away to the, my face, right? Yeah. If I, and I'll throw in, I'll throw in a pass drop and they should drop and buzz out. Right. So the same thing, flutter, pass, go. Right. Yeah. And then the last thing we do is our lever fits. Right. And that's whenever we have two pullers. And so if I step, I'll step mixed flow. I'll step this way and then I'll come back. And you'll see the front side guy fire and you'll see the backside guy long, kind of long yeah. lever over. And that's what we do every single day, rain, snow, or shine. If we could, you know, in the beginning, it takes us a while. Yeah. Right. But once we get through camp, I can get through that whole thing in about three minutes, two and a half minutes. That was going to so, be my next question was how much time do you spend every day on it? 
whatever it needs. What happens is, you know what happens? It's not that I don't spend time on it. It's how much time do I have? Yeah. If I have seven minutes, we'll do that. And then we'll go do something else. If I have 10 minutes, we'll do that. And then we'll go do some other stuff. If I've yeah. got two minutes, we're doing grid for two minutes, right? I'll shut it down. So maybe we don't get five reps aside. Maybe it's three aside, yeah. right? Like, but we absolutely refuse. We've had days where like rain delay or lightning delay, we go in. Don't think we haven't done grid drill in the team room <laughs> because we're not, we're, we're never going to go a day without it. Yeah. Because it's just integral to who we are. We, like, so oh, we do correct. It, we do yeah. it in pregame. We do it in pregame. You know, so, I mean, I used to tackle a little bit in pregame and I kind of got rid of that, but like, man, I, yeah. I, I will, I refuse to let them not, uh, get in that headspace. Cause it's, it's like, a, I mean, I hate to say it's like a blanket, but it's like a comfort thing. Yeah. Right? So yeah, but that's, that's the bulk of what we do. And like I said, there's no lines, no <laughs> one's watching. Co- Coach, listening you to you talk through that progression scares me I was an <laughs> offensive guy, quite frankly, because you just talk through that like an o- good offensive line coach talking yep. through stretch with his players. I mean, that that's a similar progression to what O-line coaches have been doing with zone and stretch for years. You know, I, to kind of put it into comparison, the way you talk through it, I'm like, this is exactly what we do with offensive line when we're teaching stretch, when we're teaching zone. He's doing the same thing, but from a defensive perspective, and that scares the shit out of me. That coaches were out there doing that. <laughs> like I'm used <laughs> well, to them reading guards and filling and and like mm-hmm. like you said. So so I am very intrigued with how you're teaching this and the progression you have because it seems like you have it down to a science, coach. Yeah. Yeah, but been doing it for a few years. And that's the great like I said, the crazy part is it's gone like, oh, we were four two five. That's how we read. Oh, my went to Park City, we were four two five for a little bit, and then we switched to a three five. And that's how we read. And then when I got to corner, I was like, well, six, eight ball, we see two good quarterbacks. We can't be in a three high, you know, a three, three DB kind of look. We got to stay some sort of two high. We can go three, but we better have four on the field. Um, and it, I didn't have to change shit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge piece for us. Our, we can be multiple. Like last year, we got so thin at linebacker that I installed a four, three. Cause I had nobody else. Right. And then we, got thin at DB and I put in a four, four. The good news is overhang is overhang. Yeah. Inside backer was inside backer. Right. And so, right. It really didn't change a whole lot on my D line. Hey, do you have an open gap or do you have a closed gap? Are you two gapping? It was the same application. So from a technique standpoint, the reason, part of the reason why we can be so multiple is that at our base, our base fundamentals and technique and training doesn't change. We're not, we're not true. You know, we don't have to do a complete revamp. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, play your shit, do your rules. It'll work. Right. And so that's the part that I, I think like and I didn't have from the beginning. I didn't think about that. I didn't think when I was like I said, I was just dumb enough to try it that, oh, this will be so easy to when I want to become multiple. Right. Like <laughs> I just had to in maybe part of it, too, is it made sense to me. Right. Like I played some backer. But the only reason I played ever played backer in high school is because we had more D linemen than linebackers. We only had like 19 kids my senior year. <laughs> Juniors and seniors. And so we had another D lineman. So if someone got hurt or was tired at linebacker, I'd moved a linebacker, we'd sub in a D line. Yeah. But I was mm-hmm. just playing D line standing <laughs> three yards off the ball. It wasn't, there was no teaching. And so when I started to get my head around it, and so I could effectively teach it to the kids, as it seemed like well, you did, I started piecing this thing together. I started going two dimensional. Yeah. And by God, it just, because like the same thing with Matt and Matt's like, okay, all right, buddy. What if we take the quarterback out of it and we do this? I'm like, yeah, you're still telling us what we need. <laughs> right. And so um, that's the cool part is there's not a lot of, I, I hate ifs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't like teaching in ifs. Right. And so it's like, now just apply your rule. Yeah. Or easier. That makes, I mean, it's kind of just listening to you kind of solidified it after talking to you on Twitter the other day. I'm like, you know, I'm not coaching right now, but if I go back, this is probably where I'm starting coach. So I'm, I'm definitely stealing this from you. It's uh, I like, I like the whole progression and everything. And I think it, like you said, I think you're always better off when you teach kids the game and the why. And this is a lot of the why it's not just, well, cause the guard pulled you follow the guard. Like that's the rule. No, yeah. now it's why, right. If flow is away from me, right. It's because one of these three things can happen, right. If flow, if flow is mixed, one of these three things can happen. So now I really like the way you're going flow away fit a, that's what I've gotten out of the night. So, <laughs> yeah. And I think it, right. 
Yeah. I think it increases your player's awareness and really their understanding of the game if you're teaching it that way versus just filling Correct. a hole. And, Coach, we used to use this. We, we'd see one triple option team a year. And, all, of course, it was always a pain to prepare for. Yep. But we would teach our linebackers that to cross-read a, a triple option or flex bone team. We're going to cross-read the wings, and that's going to give us a tip-off of what's happening in the play, and now we can react. So it looks like you're taking that same concept from the old triple option, how they would defend it, and putting it to the shotgun and putting it to a modern offense. Yeah, it, you know, like I said, like we've, we've done the thing where like you play a split back beer team, we're going to read the fullback or the running back away from the tight end, right? Like he takes you to the ball. Yeah. Right? And, and we can still mm-hmm. do that. Like kids are at least like when you introduce the idea of like reading up, you have a read key, right? Like, and whether it's a guard or like, it doesn't matter. Like we all have to teach off keys to a degree, right? Like this is your key. Yeah. For us, it's like, hey, we just do this. And then we, I just think like in the game, it makes the most sense. Between, like I said, like we kind of treat every run inside the same. We treat the outside runs kind of all the same. So we're yeah. really only defending four plays. Now there are some caveats, like how do you defend it when it's a puller, one puller, two puller, that kind of stuff. But, yeah. like, but realistically, that's an interior run. That's how do we fit interior run? Well, I do this. Well, when don't you do this? Well, when the guard does that. Right. So there's, there is, <laughs> like I say, I don't like ifs, but it's, there are, it, they're in there. Um, I just feel like it gets our kids. Um, to understand where the ball is going to be, right? And also for we talk about this, and I don't, I, I overshare, I don't care. But we talk about how good our subconscious football player is versus our conscious football player. So, like, if you have to consciously make decisions, you're more than likely going to choose wrong. Right? <laughs> and so, what I tell my kids, part of the reason why we flutter, part of the reason why we do the stuff we do, is to give their subconscious mind a chance to catch up. Yeah. Right. So after all those reps and all the film study and all the stuff we do, if we can get out of our own way and react to the stimulus that we see, provided that we've seen the correct stimulus, we're going to play better. Right. Yeah, and so for one of our mottos is 100 percent right, 100 percent wrong. Right. But always 100 <laughs> percent. So like so we want to be right. Right. We'd yeah. better, or I'd rather be late than wrong. I'd rather be late than wrong. Right. So 100 percent right, 100 percent wrong goes into that. Like if you're going to be wrong, you have to commit to it like you are right. Yeah. Because as a coach, you're going to make this giant error. And more than likely, you're going to know what you did wrong before I have to tell you. But when you get stuck in between, not yeah. aggressive, you're not this. I don't know why. I don't know what you're thinking. So but we were talking about it's better late than wrong. It's like, I'd rather give up six more inches, another yard. Right. With your flutter. Because if I once they commit to slowing down, like you'll see me tweet like how slow can you play? Like that yeah. pick, like the pick that the guy at the NFL was it two weeks ago where he didn't move. Oh, he just didn't move. Yeah. And my exact tweet was how slow can you play? I think I saw that tweet and that's what I was looking at. And I rewound that like five times. I'm like, what the hell is he doing? And uh that's exactly what it was. He was where he was, was reading something. <laughs> he was reading where where was the running back? Where's the quarterback? Yeah. He's RPO sit read. <laughs> Correct. Right? Yeah. And so I sat on it and I was like, my guys, that tweet was for my guys. How slow can you play? Because I tell them, we'll go to inside run. Dare, dare yourself. See yeah. how slow you can play. And you'll see it. They're slow, slow, slow. And then they just explode. Boom. And I'm like, that's what that then. So those are the things that we work on. Like, why are we fluttering? Well, there's also some like cool subconscious shit involved. Yeah. That I want them to play a little bit slower. But yeah, like. You'll see my guys like the 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 flutter almost goes away at times because you'll see their feet just like they're playing so slow they don't even want to move they're just like <laughs> right they just go um, and so that's when it gets exciting is whenever you see them all of a sudden we're like it was like a magic trick we had a kid I, I remember the exact play it happened JV kid last year I started laughing my ass off on the sideline because I saw he got it. he it was like and he looked over and I was like he was just like. Holy shit, that was magic. <laughs> they snapped it. The dude took one step and he went right to the C gap and the ball showed. He was just like, what in the hell was that? And the next play, <laughs> boom, right there. Next yep. play, flow away. Guy cut back. He hammers it for a TFL. And uh, he comes off the sideline. Well, I'm done. I can't there, teach you shit There's anymore. the grid right there. <laughs> now if you can just figure out how to grow six inches and put on 50 pounds. Yeah. We're going to be really good. Now genetics have to take over. Exactly. Um, well, coach, I, I love the linebacker progression. I appreciate you talking run fits. We are 
definitely moving towards on the podcast, wanting to talk a lot more X's and O's like that. So I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have a couple more questions before I let you go. But the, cool. before I start those two questions, my next question is going to be, when can we have you back on to talk Sims and Creepers? Because that's what I that's what I want to get down nitty and gritty with. So. See, that's an inside joke. They, no one knows. My coach was like, hey, you can talk about whatever you want. Linebacker, Sims, Creepers. I'm like, boy, I, nothing flares my ADD, ADHD more than that shit. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I, it's like I said, like I'm pretty good about like wiping the board clean and just going. Yeah. Right? But there's one little, one little caveat, right? There always is. Um, I have to give a shit. If I give a shit about something, like I don't have cursory or casual levels of knowledge. Yeah. It's not who I am. Right. Like you've seen cover the cover two barbecue stuff. I almost <laughs> went to culinary school. Right. Like when I'm into cooking, I can cook. Boy, I know a lot of shit and I'm pretty good <laughs> at it. And it's not whatever I get into. Like I was self, I was an IT guy for like 15 years, self-taught. Yeah. Just got into it, figured yeah. it out, whatever. I don't get into football. Go crazy. I got to just be a track coach. I'm three, at the point in time, I was 355 pounds. <laughs> Coaching sprints. Right. When we break the schools, 100, 200, 400, 800, the four by one, the four by two, the four by four, the four by eight, we break all those records with a 350 pound mm. track coach. Were you now coach? Hold on. Were you feeding the cats? I mean, do you know what so, feed the cats is? Yeah. I'm from Illinois. Of course I do. Uh, I'm just saying so, we had Tony <laughs> Holler on last episode. It Tony just is, premiered. Today. Tony is a G dude. Yes. Oh, but here's the deal where Tony got this from, from like path and, and tells, and all these other track coaches. Yep. Guess what I did whenever I was going to be a track coach. I you went to all see- that. Yeah. I went seeking knowledge. Yeah. And I didn't have any dogma. I had no affiliation. I had nothing that no proclivity towards anything because I was a baseball kid. Yeah. Right. So what happened was I go to Riverton. I go to my hometown. They, we have my, my little brother's eighth grade class. Um, we had, we had, we had, we had prop, we had, we had so much propaganda going into these kids. We've got a hundred boys in the class. And I think we had like 42 of them out from football. Right. And 40 of those guys, we had them all going doing track. Yeah. Right. So they get in shape for it. Well, we end up with like, it's sixth, seventh and eighth grade track in Illinois. And we end up with like, it's co-ed. We end up with like 180 kids out. Oof. Two coaches. Yeah. And the shot and disc is on the football practice field, which is 350 yards away. Yeah. No direct line of sight. <laughs> so, Jeez. uh, the, yeah, the assistant principals like, or the principals like, Hey code, um, we need you to coach track. Yeah. I'm like, track a baseball guy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can you make sure they don't hit each other with the shot puts and discus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I probably could do that. So I go out there, but like, coaching is in my blood. It's in my nature. Yeah. And so I couldn't just stand out there, get my little stipend and whatever. Um, cause the head coach is like, you don't have to come to meets. You don't have to do this. He's very, very like accommodating. Yeah. Cause he just was like, I just don't want to have stitches and bloody people every day. Correct. So I went out there, but I just couldn't do it. So I started helping and I started to kind of get a little bit of a bug for just coaching. Right. And it was actually the first thing I ever coached. Cause I was, I was 29 before I started coaching. Right. I had a whole nother oh, wow. career before this. Um, and so I didn't catch my first football game until I was 30. So like, yeah. And so like, I, I, I get into the first thing I ever coach is like junior high throws, like a, in official capacity. Right. <laughs> and so I'm just a young guy. I've been waiting my whole life to coach. I'm ready to go. So I start learning stuff. Right. And then I do okay. Uh, and then the next year I get somehow get promoted to the assistant track coach of the high school team. <laughs> right. The head coach is another baseball guy. So it's two baseball guys running track. Cause we're nice enough to do it. Yeah, but I had this kid who was like a quasi D three thrower. He was a football kid. He's a great kid. I spent the whole football season with him. Really, really liked him. And uh, so I was like, well, I can help Justin out a little bit. I can, you know, I'll coach him or whatever. But like, I he's a pretty good thrower. So I was like, cool. I don't know much. I'll probably get to learn a lot from him, right? Well, he had a he had a, a third party coach. He had an outside coach who yeah. was like my my hero growing up. He was the guy that like. Threw it 58, the shot put 58. His brother yeah. threw it like 177. <laughs> uh, Sean was the first four time for uh, all state discus thrower in Illinois history. He, went, he placed top eight all- machine, right? Yeah. And his dad was the scariest human on the world earth. I used to walk by their house <laughs> on the way to the grocery store and I couldn't even make eye contact with the man. <laughs> so Sean's his coach and he's the most uh, open, inviting, and sharing coach that I've ever been around. Yeah. 
part of the reason why probably the way I am is because he was like, yeah, what do you need to learn? Right. And so I would video Justin's shit and send it to him. Right. And so he would t- I tell him to do this, do this. I know what else. I was telling him, I was just, you know, <laughs> I was just echoing it. Right. Well, slowly and surely I started figuring it out. Right. And so then that guy that was the head coach left and I, then it was like, oh, now I got to do this throws thing for now I got to do sprints and jumps and all this other stuff. And again, I just went down the rabbit hole. And what I came out with was the feed the catch. I got to the same conclusion that Tony did because yeah. I felt like the Clyde Hart version of bunch of slow, long volume oh, gosh. was for, for different genetic profiles. It just wasn't for the kids I had. And so plus like, do you want to do all that? Or do you want to come in and we'll lift weights because you're a football kid? We'll do a bunch of plyo stuff. We'll do like circuit training, calisthenics in place. We'll run maybe 600 meters a week. Yeah. And, and I'm going to buy cool Jordan uniforms. And my numbers went through the roof. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Exactly. A little marketing. So, yeah, Feed the Cats is huge. Love it. Absolutely love it. In fact, when it started to come on, my one buddy goes, hey, isn't that the shit you were doing? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> right? He's got a better name, you know. So, but yeah, no. Yeah, Tony, it's he's the man. But that's that whole thing. That's the and then I and then when I went to wrestling, never wrestled. I, you know, I, same thing. I just dug down and tried to find like the middle line. Um, you got to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. just a, it's always been to support my football kids. Yeah, Matt, hey, did you coach, have one more question? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Coach. Really showed tonight your true IT guy coming out. You know, you're talking a little bit about feedback loops for coaches and stimulus for players. Um, Anything else you can kind of bridge the gap there between what you've learned in IT and coaching? <laughs> um, well, I worked, you know, I worked IT and then I worked K twelve IT, right? And so um, this is a whole different level, right? Like, um, <laughs> you know, Riverton, I pretty much felt like I had to like whittle parts out of wood. We just didn't have budget for anything. Like, we got this <laughs> giant, we got this giant, uh, 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 like uh, this giant, you know, like. Uh, one million dollar grant buy all this stuff the problem is we didn't have a million dollar grant infrastructure and that stuff so it crumbled right yeah and so we didn't have those foundations built. like oh we're gonna add every kid from fifth through this grade is gonna get a laptop I'm like oh on our three access points in the whole school good idea <laughs> <laughs> right and then when they made mistakes on like uh licensing volumes and all that stuff they corrected it out of my budget it was, it was rough Right. Um, and then I went to Missouri where we actually had uh, 256 square miles of redundant done fiber that we completely managed and maintained and spliced and all that stuff. So I'm using oh, wow. a $20,000 fusion splicer in a tent on the side of the road because we're also the ISP for like 20 different businesses, parochial schools and stuff. So like it was completely different. Right. So what I would say is like the bulk of the jobs the same. The locations changes maybe with the, where some of the the things you can do, right? Like yeah. there would be no, there would be no reason for me to know how to use a fusion splicer in Riverton. We had one run of fiber between two buildings, right? So, <laughs> but in Missouri it was a different, different kind of setup. So yeah, I'm a nerd. Been, been a nerd. Oh, no, we, we are too. Oh, that's great. Matt's and a it, math teacher. Nice. I'm a, I'm a history guy. So I'm a history dork. Uh, nice. So we, we know it well. All yeah. right. So coach, we end every episode with the same question. Okay. All right. We ask every coach, no matter what they talked about is what's the most interesting or unique thing that your school does that no one else does uh, that you can talk about to us or your program. Interesting thing we do. Well, I mean, just something that maybe not a lot of other people do do or something. Do you have like open comments on these? No. Well, I mean, yeah, we do. I guess on YouTube, no one ever comments on it though. So, Oh, you'll get some comments. Um, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, those people have some opinions about Corner Canyon. So, I might get emotional. No, you're good. That's why you know it's good, right? Um, yes. So, Corner Canyon is pretty, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. I'm pretty blessed to be here, right? Like when I left Park City. So I left Park. City, I I wrote down the the four things that I hated or didn't like about my life, and then I attacked the shit out of them. And yeah. unfortunately, the best course of action because I'm a problem solver by nature is I had to quit coaching. So I had to pull the thing that maybe I love as much as anything outside of my family in the world. I pulled the plug to fix other stuff. Yeah. And so never knew where I was going to land. I went 0 for 9. The year I came back, I went 0 for 9 applying for head coaching jobs. Right. Four of those have opened up in two years. 
I beat the shit out of the teams that didn't hire me. I told them I was going to do it. (laughs) It's like, you can hire me or lose to me. It's your choice. Yeah. And so far I'm perfect on those. Um, But coming to corner Canyon, uh, you know what you're walking into. So coach care has been to the semifinals or better seven straight years. They got four titles in six years. Right. Um, So like, you know, like losing two games or one game at the corner is tough. Yeah. Right. So like the expectations are mile high. Um, but I got to experience some stuff here beyond like this, the, the top, the surface stuff. So after the final game, whatever it may be for us, luckily it's been the state title game. So in 22, um, our best receiver got broke his collarbone. Um, they had a couple four stars, the four stars having to bracket Tate, Tate got hurt. Now the, the four star could spy our quarterback because they were playing bracket on our slot receiver. We were just gutting them with QB. Round. Yeah. Well, that went away. So we lost 17 to seven. Right. And so we lost 17 to seven and we come back and, uh, you know, we kind of, you know, do the end of the end of the game meeting in the team room and dismiss everybody but the seniors. Right. So all the coaches line up and kind of in the front of the room and all the kids are in the team room and, and the seniors are in there. And we kind of just talk about what these kids have meant to us. Right. And so uh, pretty powerful. Right. You spend a lot of time with these kids. You get to know these kids. But then you start adding in that, like, Oh, this, this coach has to now talk about his senior son. Yeah. And his friends that he's known since they were little bitty guys has seen them play every full game of football they've ever played. And it's over. Yeah. And he just lost the state title. <laughs> right. And so wildly powerful. Um, I think a lot of coaches miss the opportunity to, to express how much they actually do care for the kids. Yeah. I'm very, I, I say, I tell my kids all the time that I love them. And I mean it, right? It's a rational love. It's not irrational love like a parent. Yeah. Right? Like where like, you know, it causes problems. It's clearly a rational love, but I love these kids. And we just express that to them and what they've meant to us and what they've meant to the program and the things that we're going to miss about them. And, um, a really powerful, amazing moment. Heartbreaking when there's a coach with a kid that's a yeah. senior, right? Well, flash forward to this year, my kid's a senior. Yeah. The head coach's kid's a senior. Right. And so we got to about, well, I don't know, week three or week four. And I just, I flat out told him I refused, fucking refused <laughs> to be in that room and say goodbye with anything less than a title. Yeah, absolutely. Because I already had trouble speaking. And we just had the greatest thing that we had done as a group, especially because we'd lost the two years before. And it was the, they had a chance to be the first group that goes through like their sophomore, junior, senior year without winning one. And, yeah, I made that abundantly clear to them, but to go through that, like I barely could do it in a joyous, let alone if it was bad. Um, but the power, the connection, um, because I think a lot of times, um, you know, if you know, we know how good it feels when a kid that we've worked with, um, you know, texts us or calls us or whatever, yeah. right? right? We had it happen anyway. the other night to me and Matt. It was the best part of my night. So yep. it feels so amazing because you, you've put so much into these kids, and you know, I stress that, like, look, it's four years, but it's for the rest of our lives. Like yeah. We're always going to be connected. Like you've given, we've given each other so much. This isn't transactional. This doesn't have a period. This does, this is forever. Right. Like I'll do anything I can for you. Like, please allow me to, don't be a shithead and make me not want to. But like, <laughs> right. Real talk. Yeah. Right. But like that moment was like one last moment to be like, Hey man, you do mean this much to me. Yeah. And I told him this year, I said, you know, what hurts me when you guys don't call. Yeah. Like, don't, don't not do that. Right. Like, like I got a call the other day from one kid I coached back in Park City that I felt guilty leaving. He was a junior, yeah. right? I, the whole class I walked away from talked to him for 15 or 20 minutes. It was awesome. Right. So I thought it felt like that moment to make sure that they knew what they meant to me. Um, and I've never been to the program that does that. It is not comfortable. <laughs> no, <laughs> even, even winning, it wasn't comfortable. You're very rare. And, and when you get to be grown and married and stuff and have kids already that you get stirred that much. Yeah. And I think coach care does that. And like, you know, it's pretty powerful. And I think like, um, you know, people are like, Oh, well, if you, when I move on, what are you going to steal from care? I definitely know I'm stealing. That. Like he's, yeah. he's had un- unprecedented success. I should probably steal his offense and strength condition and all that kind of stuff. But like, um, I'm, I don't know that I can execute the things that he does because it's him, but I do know that that part, yeah, I would want to execute. And I think the kids that, especially we ask so much for our kids, four days a week, 6 a.m., 
four to five, four or five days a week in the summer for four hours. And the commitment we ask from our kids, like to make sure that they know, like, hey, dude, look, I even the kids that don't have the on field success, like how much they mean to you, and to make sure that they know that I'm, I'm, I've never changed my phone number from when I left Illinois because I'm just deathly afraid that one of my kids would need me and they could reach me. Um, and so, but yeah, that's the, that is the coolest thing we do. Uh, it is a hell of a lot cooler, uh, to be in there with the trophy, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, I think that's the cool now thing I, to do is I that going, that. that last kind of ceremony of like, just making sure we all know what it really meant. That's powerful stuff, coach. Yeah, it is. Good. We appreciate you sharing that. It, yeah. It's a common question we asked every podcast guest, um, because we know when we ask that question, no matter, first of all, everything you said here was great, Coach. So it's, I'm not downplaying yeah. any of it, but we know we're going to get one thing that everyone can take away from every podcast when we ask that one question because yeah. the answers have been phenomenal across the board. I think this is the 15th one we've recorded. We're still pretty early on, but every time we ask that question, we get a really, really good response. It's some yeah. cool culture thing. It's, and, and it's very rarely, I don't know if it's, Matt, has it ever been anything that's like pure football? I think it's always some kind of extracurricular thing they do. It's always um, something outside the X's yeah. and O's of it. Yeah. So, and that's the goal of that question. So coach, we really appreciate you sharing. Yeah. Um, for those of you that are listening, uh, you can contact coach. He's on Twitter. If you want to follow him, it's right. It's at Cody underscore gardener. Correct. Yep. It's like all caps. Um, you can reach out to coach if you want. He's pretty good about it. If you uh, are a little bashful and you don't want to reach out to coach, you can reach out to us at the board drill podcast at gmail.com. And I will pass your questions along to coach Gardner. Again, you can listen to all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple, Spotify. Uh, we even have a TikTok. Uh, we do put clips up on there. We, we really enjoy TikTok and growing on there. So, um, Thank you, Coach Gardner, again, for coming on tonight. Um, we appreciate everything. Uh, I think, obviously, the future is very bright for everyone coached by you. I learned a bunch tonight. I know I'm going to go back and watch this about 100 times and write a bunch of notes. So thanks a lot. I appreciate you teaching us, and I appreciate you teaching our audience. Yeah, it was my pleasure, man. Yeah, and like it, don't be shy. Guys. Like like I said, like I, I, I overshare. I don't give a shit. Like I, I don't, I, I do not, I don't hold any kind of secrets back. If you, if I can help you get better, I want to help you get better. I've, I'll coach you just like I coach my kids. And we are all looking forward to new episodes of Cover Two and Barbecue. I am a huge fan yeah. already, Coach. It needs to come back. We I've have got to get that going. We have got to get I it going. I, and I, I bought like I bought the mixer. I bought better mics. <laughs> I'm like if I spend money, I'll do it. Coach, oh. I'll make you a deal. I'll edit at least one episode of okay. it. If it gets you to do it again, I will okay. I will commit to editing one of the uh, episodes. So I love it. Coach, thank you so much for your time. Have a great night. Yeah, same thank you, Coach. Uh, thank you. Thank you.